Hey crafty people, it's Tasha. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be covering a couple of different techniques. We're going to start with making three different backgrounds with Distress Oxides and that is using the brand new Saltwater Taffy colour um, and then we're also going to cover creating um, a full panel shaker from stuff that you I'm sure you definitely have around your craft room. So I'm going to start with just a um, an ink blended ombre kind of background. Um, I love ink blending and I find Distress Oxides are just so easy to blend um, and they're just, they're just really creamy and beautiful. So I'm starting with, I think it's Victorian Velvet <laughs> and then I've gone into the Saltwater Taffy which is the new colour. Um, it's quite a sort of muted lovely pink um, and I think that it blends really well with that Victorian velvet um, and then we're going to go from there into some abandoned coral so at this point that the colour is getting more vibrant um, and brighter and I think it's just a really nice transition between those three colours. Um, I'm just ink blending on it's basically you know like laminator sheets I laminated <laughs> I laminated one then I laminated that inside another and then I laminated those inside another so it, it's about um a4 size but it's really thick and sturdy and I just find that I like that for ink blending so I decided that I wanted a little bit more drama and I wanted to deepen that purple tone um a bit more so I grabbed out my seedless preserves so I ended up with um, seedless preserves, then Victorian velvet, then salt or taffy, um, and then the abandoned coral. So I've let that just dry, settle for a little bit, um, and you can see how lovely and smooth that blend is. And then I decided to add a little bit of texture. Um, I've just squirted a bit of water, just give that a second to work, and then dry that up with a towel. So background number two, we're going to do some ink smooshing. So this is super easy. Um, I know ink blending is not everybody's cup of tea, um, but this is just so easy to do. So literally just squashed the ink pad down onto that laminated sheet that I've got there um, and spritzed it with some water. And then I am putting the a, a sheet of, this is the Distress watercolour cardstock um, and I'm just pressing that down into it um, and the magic with this kind of technique is that you want to build it up in layers so I've squashed it down in the lighter colours first then I've dried that with my heat tool and um, I've got the wow heat tool and there's um, a lower setting which is perfect for drying things like paint and ink and things so I've worked up through the sort of starting with the salt water taffy and victorian velvet um, and then I've layered on top of that the abandoned coral um, and then eventually I've added some seedless preserves um, and I love how that comes out it's so vibrant and beautiful so background number three we're going to do some more ink blending but this time we're going to use a stencil so this is the I think it's sprinkles <laughs> Oh, I, one of these days I will get names in my head. <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, like sprin sprinkles stencil. Um, it's time for tea. Um, and I'm just using those same colours. But I have switched up um, the sort of order that I've gone in. Because if you aren't confident with ink blending, then using a stencil like this is going to really help you explore how your inks are going to blend. Um, because having that pattern kind of masks it. So if, if you don't get a brilliant blend um, or the two colours that you put next to each other don't really work, you won't notice as much because there's not as much space to, to see it in. So once I'd done that whole panel, um, I decided I didn't want it quite as white and stark, the background. So 
without adding any extra ink to my brushes I just went over um, just to like I said take some of that bright white out then on top of that I'm going to spray some shimmer spray um, this is just one that I've made myself with perfect pills and water and there we are there are our three backgrounds I love them I love this color combination and um, I'm definitely going to be using that some more so moving on to our second technique of the day we're going to make a full panel shaker using some plastic packaging that I'm sure you have um, lying around your house let's recycle it um, and you know save yourself some money as well you don't need to buy the acetate or the specialist sheets so I've cut some this is a packaging from a stamp set um, and I've cut it so obviously it's not a, it's not double it's just one single sheet um, and I've roughly cut it to be a bit larger than the panel that I'm going to use I've then snipped off all of the corners but you want to be careful not to snip all the way up to the corner of your cardstock um, because that's going to leave a gap where your shaker bits could potentially come out so once I've got that all the corners snipped I've added some strong double-sided adhesive I'm doing one side at a time just adding that adhesive remove the um, backing paper um, and then fold that side of the plastic over so it is secured from behind and eventually we're going to have that sealed on all four sides and that's going to create um, a, a full panel or infinity shaker um, where basically there's no frame there's nothing around it it's just as it sounds a full panel shaker um, and I just think this this is a fun and ridiculously extra <laughs> way to make a shake card so I'm going to seal three of those sides um, and you can see there I was just checking the corners to make sure that I hadn't cut them too um, close to the cardstock and then once I've got the three sides done and um, before I seal that fourth side I want to add all my shaker bits so I've got various different sequins and bits and bobs that I'm just adding in this is a great way to use up any of those sequins or you know you could even use little seed beads um like the clay um little clay sprinkles anything anything at all so once i'm happy with what's inside it i'm going to seal that fourth side and that gives me a full panel shaker so i'm not going to show you for the other two because it is exactly the same i just used some slightly different sequins and um, but they were just all bits and bobs that i had in my stash so now I'm going to show you how I finished these cards off. So the sprinkles background, I've got the adorable panda in a teacup. It's so cute. Um, and the sentiment, you're terrific. <laughs> I love it. Then for the um, plain ink blended background, um, I cut a small panel of vellum using that heart panel a2 panel die um, and the big birthday wishes sentiment die um, and I stacked that white on the top with some holographic paper behind it then our last one um, and I think that this one is my favorite I've used these adorable little skunks um, and then the sentiment joy is I, I hadn't got that one out because that was one that I made before and was in my stash so I just grabbed a sentiment from there so you can see now some more close-up details um, and I just love they are so much fun <laughs> um, and my daughter youngest daughter was like they're mine <laughs> she wants them so I hope that you'll give it a go let me know what you think about the new distress ink color if you do create something that is inspired by anything that I've made today, then I'd love it if you'd please tag me and Time for Tea so that we can see your beautiful creations. I have all of the products that I've used linked below. And I hope that you have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.